So we've just learned the sandwich or squeeze theorem, sandwiching f of x between two other functions that have the same limit. And now we're going to see how to use that. So for our example, we are going to show that the limit as x approaches 0 of the function x squared cosine 4 over x, we're going to show that that limit actually equals 0. So Notice that this is worded a little bit differently from some of our previous limit problems. It doesn't just say, find out what the limit is. It's actually giving us the answer by saying that, oh, the limit is zero, and we need to show that this is going to be true. Okay, so that's one indicator that we might be able to use our sandwich theorem here, because we know what the limit is that we're trying to show or demonstrate. All right, so we're going to do this in a couple steps here. And first is going to be setting up our sandwich. We are going to find g of x and h of x that sandwich our little filling function here, f of x which equals x squared cosine 4 over x. Okay, note that uh, on this problem, we couldn't have just used direct substitution, plugging in x equals 0, our limit value. Not going to work in that denominator. So it's always good to check that first, because that's usually the easiest way to find a limit if it works. Okay, so we need g of x and h of x that sandwich this f of x function and have the same limit as x approaches zero, since that's the point that we're interested in. Okay, now these sandwich theorem problems will frequently involve a trig function because um, trig functions use, well, they have a lot of oscillation going on in them. So if we're able to find something to kind of sandwich that oscillation down a little bit, it can be pretty helpful. So on our trig functions, notice how this is a cosine function. And we know, or hopefully we know from trig, a really handy inequality about the values of cosine. So just to refresh your memories a little bit, the values of the cosine function for any angle are always going to be between negative 1 and positive 1. Okay, that's from your, your unit circle, your special triangles, um, however you've learned trig that way. The values of cosine can only be between negative 1 and positive 1. Same thing with sine, between negative 1 and positive 1. Um, your other trig functions will vary, but for those two main trig functions, this is a good inequality to know. So, for our function here, we have something that looks a little bit like that. This portion of the function, we have cosine 4 over x. And so 4 over x is going to essentially take the place of theta right here. The inequality will still hold true. So we know that negative 1 will be less than or equal to cosine 4 over x. That will be less than or equal to 1 because it's just a cosine function again. Then you might say, well, that's not the function that we were really trying to look at. That's just the cosine bit. So we need to incorporate this x squared part as well, definitely. And since x squared is multiplying our cosine function in f of x, we're going to just take our inequality here and we're going to multiply everything through by x squared, all three pieces of the inequality. So we'll have negative 1 times x squared would be negative x squared. And then 
cosine 4 over x times x squared gives us, well, the function that we were looking at, x squared times cosine 4 over x. And then 1 times x squared is just x squared. So we've set up an inequality sandwich for our functions here. All right, this negative x squared is going to be our g of x. g of x equals negative x squared. In the middle, here's our function f of x. And then over here, x squared, that is our h of x function. Okay. Now we should verify here just to make sure that g of x and h of x actually have the same limit as x approaches zero because that's part of our requirements. So let's check. The limit as x approaches zero of g of x, which is negative x squared. Well, we're fortunate here. We can just use direct substitution. Zero is in the domain of negative x squared no problem, we can just plug it right in and we get zero. Same thing with h of x. The limit as x approaches zero of h of x, which is positive x squared, we can directly substitute into that as well. We get zero squared, which is zero. Okay, so yes, these are equal. <laughs> okay, these are equal. Okay, so we have our function sandwich set up. The two outer bread functions both approach the same limit. So our middle function is left with nowhere else to go. f of x is going to have to also approach zero. It's going to have a limit of zero as x approaches zero. So how we would summarize that would be to say, since negative x squared is less than x squared cosine four over x is less than or equal to x squared, and the limit as x approaches zero of negative x squared equals the limit as x approaches zero of positive x squared, those both equal zero. What I'm doing here, by the way, is just basically rewriting the theorem, the actual sandwich theorem itself. So we're saying since we have this function sandwich inequality set up, oh, I guess we could have written when x is near zero, and these two limits are equal. They equal L, which in our case is zero. Then we're allowed to conclude that f of x has that same limit L. Okay, so that's all we're doing when we're writing the summary here. So this is true. We could have said um, right in here when x is near zero, but that's, that's okay. We're showing that the two outer functions do have the same limit. It equals zero. So we say by the sandwich theorem, this is what we're using. The limit as x approaches zero of x squared cosine four over x equals zero. That's our conclusion there. So that is how we have shown that this actually was the limit. We've come to that same conclusion by setting up our inequality sandwich and making sure the two outer functions have the same limit. Now, Real quickly, let's also go look at the graphs of these functions so we can see what's going on. Okay, so here's on Open Graphing Calculator. Um, I've put in our three functions. They're slightly different colors than I notated them on the notes, but that's okay. Um, our middle function 
the f of x, here it is, x squared cosine 4 over x, that's shown in blue. And we can see it's in the middle here and it's oscillating. Now this is also going to hit one of those cases of some wild oscillation in the, in the middle as x gets close to zero. I'm zooming in here. These are very, very small values like this over here is 0 0.1, so you can see how tiny this is. But it's just oscillating faster and faster. But we also have our sandwich graphed in here. Positive x squared is the parabola above, shown in green. Negative x squared is this parabola down below, shown in pink. And you can see that as we get close to x equals 0, the blue function, f of x, stays solidly in between those two boundary functions, x squared and negative x squared, even when we zoom in. And those two outer functions, the parabolas, both have a limit of zero, so their y values are approaching zero. They even meet up in the middle there. And since f of x, the cosine function is oscillating but stuck between those two parabolas. When those two parabolas both go to zero at the same time, they both approach a limit of zero, the cosine function has nowhere else to go. It gets smashed or squeezed into that sandwich and it has to have a limit of zero also. So there's the sandwich theorem at work. All right, pretty cool. I like that graph. Now, there is one more trick we can use for showing what limits are doing or evaluating limits algebraically. This is the idea of one-sided limits, but the book actually saves that for another section, section 2.4. So we are going to have that section coming up next and we'll look at that one-sided limits idea. But for now, there was the four tricks for evaluating limits algebraically.